so quick update time I am going to be doing um, the second part of the stage check and then hopefully the end of course check with one flight um, we had that storm slash tornado midweek it's now Saturday so what I was going to talk about today on this video is the um, passage and briefing um, I wasn't going to do it but um, if you've seen Russ can fly's latest video some people said I might have been a little harsh on him with my comment in reply um, but um, I, I, I wanted to correct it because I think people misinterpreted what I was doing. Um, I wasn't being mean and I wasn't being like a grammar Nazi. I hope he didn't take it like that. Like someone that always corrects you on the spot so as you make the slightest bit of mistake. Um, I am in full blown study mode. Is there any chance that I see to test myself, I grab it and take it. And I know Russ right now is in the exact same position. He is studying and working to do his check ride. Um, so I, I'm doing, I'm treating him like I would hope anyone would treat me. If I make a mistake, I need someone to point it out to me. Um, and so passenger briefings um, is a good time to practice doing them while you're driving to the airport hence why we're here now passenger briefings there is so many different ways so many different types of passenger briefings that you can give that you want to give but the only thing that is legally required to be given is the briefing on a seatbelt and how to fix them and when they should be worn and who they should be worn by. Um, everything else is optional and at the discretion of the pilot in command if they determine that you're familiar with it they don't need to go through it. So um, like if you're a very first time person in a plane at all you can adapt your breathing like if you're nervous you can have a breathing special for that um, you can use the acronym safety to help remember passenger breathings that's what i was trained on safety seat belts seat belts lift the light up and uh, to undo Slide it in until you hear the click. Shoulder harnesses on. The pilot has to have the shoulder harness and seatbelt on during all stages of flight. Passengers may have it on during, uh, must have it on during taxi and takeoff and landing. But uh, you can change that if you want. If you'd want them to keep it on all the time as the pilot command, you can say during all stages of flight. If you are an anxious pilot, um, I ask that you would hold on to this shoulder strap instead of lashing out for the yoke. Now it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to touch anything that will cause any kind of crash. Like I know, there's lots of dials and knobs and buttons but it's very unlikely you could touch anything on the dashboard that would cause anything seriously to go wrong that I couldn't fix so however if you have questions point them out ask, you can ask me what whatever this does or what this button does airways we have the airways air fence to the ankles we have a window that we can use uh, on the ground
emergency egress is to the right. We have a door. Uh, to close the door, you pull the door and lock the latch at the top. If it, to undo, you pull the silver handle, undo the latch and push. And if needs be, I have a window that I can kick out. Otherwise, I would use the same egress as you. During uh, key stages of flight, we will have essential talk only, taxi, takeoff and landing. Um, if you see something that concerns you, say something. If there's anything that concerns you at all, if you say a more, I will more. And then we can talk about it after once we're off the runway or once we've gone around. Uh, exchange of controls is a three stage process. So I will say you have the controls, you say I have the controls. I will observe you and say you have the controls to make sure you do. And for this flight, I will be PIC, you will be a passenger or second in command. And do you have any questions? And then you can change it for pilot. You can say, uh, I will be for this flight, I will be pilot in command, you will be uh, second in command. You can take care of the radios and you can do the transponder while I maintain the flight. So that first one with the explanation about the dials and not being able to cause a crash is just to ease someone's nerves. Like, because they're going to be aware that if they push or press something that they could cause a crash. And, you know, if you just relax them and, you know, get them to, to relax and say, you got all these dials, it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to press anything or do anything that I won't be able to recover from. Even if you turn the mixture off and turn the engine off, which is we start it in flight. But if the same person comes with me like three or four times, uh, all I would do is uh, the seat belts, uh, just the shoulder harness and seat belts must be worn at all times. To lift the latch, shove it and pull to undo it and slide the buckle in until you hear the click and pull to tighten. That's all you need to give. Hmm. But no, I mean, freaking study my ass off. I, um, I use um, a kind of weird reward system like I do two hours of studying either the PDFs that I got and then do uh, like a 40 minute video on King Schools um, and then I go back to another PDF and then I break for an hour for lunch come back do more then go watch an episode of Star Trek or something and rest and then at 5 o'clock I cut myself off and just say that's my day done um, it seems to be working I had to text my instructor and like say where do I find the types of flaps because I couldn't find them anywhere like I, for some reason I couldn't remember where they were and it is in the PAG so um because um I got asked last time what type of flaps we have on the Cherokee and uh, I I couldn't tell them um, I know they're manually operated, but I thought he was like asking for a name uh, But there's the different types and uh, I was reading through the entire POH And uh, page 7 and 8 
all it says that the, the manually operated spring loaded um, it doesn't give a name or say what they are but the um, it names the anti zevo trim tab and uh, so it's like you know I was looking everywhere but the book keep it simple stupid <laughs>
other thing that would be required, but only if you're going over, you're going out beyond the glide distance from land. Like if you were to lose your engine, and no matter what you did at best glide path, you would never reach land. Then you would have to give a briefing on uh, life jackets and uh, water equipment, survival equipment.
remember the acronym and I can remember some of the items but I can never remember it. I can I only ever remember the uh, FER code 91205 so I can always look it up but it's You got the uh, altimeter, tachometer, uh, tachometer. <laughs> I mean, tachometer. <laughs> um, you got the oil gauge. You got the. Uh, Magnetic compass, tomato. You got the oil pressure, oil twice. You got the temperature gauges. gives clear advice to the president but mix the donor lime ice clear ice mixed ice and they are all types of structure icing and then you have induction icing like carburetor ice carb, carb ice instrument icing like when your pedo freezes up and gets blocked then you have the structural icing which is what I mentioned
corrected for the wind. you later. See you later.